Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. I'd like to take another look at uh, one of the things you've been learning about recently and that is uh, a gear trains. We can imagine that we have some small gear here driving some you know some bigger gear B and maybe we want to find the relationship between the force of A to, uh, to the force of B. My apologies I've written and said force of A compared with force of B. What I meant was the torque applied at A compared with the torque applied at B. Or maybe we're trying to find the relationship between the angular velocity of A and the angular velocity of B. Or, or heck, at that point we might even be interested, interested in the uh, radial acceleration of A with compared to the radial acceleration of B. Whatever, you know the, the idea. But in all these cases, we're looking at this point right here. We look at this point right here to identify that the force of A on B is equal to the force of B on A. We look there to see that the velocity at that point, the tangential velocity at A is equal to the tangential velocity of B. In these cases we have gear teeth making sure this happens. This is the same type of perspective that we want to take when we're looking at things, balls, cylinders, rolling on a surface. Some of the first questions that we're going to be asked when we're looking at balls rolling on the surface is are what type of interaction is happening? Is it slipping or is it not slipping? Let's imagine a cylinder rolling with some angular velocity in this direction and it's moving in this direction and we'll call it since it's a cylinder we'll say VC and Omega C we'd like to know what's going on right here is it slipping or is it rolling along without slip another way to see this type of setup is we have the same cylinder and it's traveling through space not rotating so it has some sort of velocity C and we have a cylinder that's not traveling through space with some angular velocity. If we add these two together we get our final result which is some cylinder rotating and traveling. Well let's take a look at what's happening at the bottom of a cylinder in each of these cases. We'll scroll down a little bit to get a better feel of it. At the bottom of the cylinder here the velocity of that cylinder compared to the ground is velocity C. And the velocity of the cylinder, we'll give this some r, some, some, some radius, the velocity of the cylinder due to this type of interaction is omega C times r and if we look at this little point right here as the cylinder is rolling along if it's rolling without slip we know that the velocity right there between those two components is equal to zero well from our equation all we need to do is add these two together and if the two of them sum to zero we have a cylinder rolling without slip or another way to say it is Vc equals omega Cr. This is our uh, non-slip condition. Finally, let's imagine that we do have some sort of sliding going on. Well, what does the equation for that look like? It looks just like what's going on here. Let's do it in yellow. We take the velocity of some cylinder, the, the basically the velocity of the center of mass, we'll call it say the velocity of center of mass, there we go, plus the angular velocity times the radius and that is going to be equal to the velocity as it is sliding. In other words, what is the relative velocity between the rotating object and whatever it's pushing against? These two equations, number one and number two, are pretty much all you need to deal 
with rolling objects. Hope this quick look gives you a good feel and some good tools for dealing with rolling objects.